right? So even if the, even if I don't have a MRI machine in my head and I can't tell if you're gonna herniate some discs, I just been doing this long enough that I've seen it happen. And usually what I've seen is I've, I've heard the story that took place before I met the person. Mm -hmm. Usually the person comes to me when they're older and they're like, oh my God, a bad back. And then I find out that they're as tall as you are. How tall are you? 6'2". Okay, you're 6'2", strong guy, did all kinds of martial arts and, and know how to move your body well. You're going to force your body to go do whatever needs to be done. Yeah. The problem is you don't realize the potential damage that's happening. And all these guys that I've worked with, are baseball players or football players or whatever, same athletic guys, they force their bodies into these positions and then they end up having all kinds of surgeries and whatnot, yeah. which we don't want. However, if I don't have an MRI machine in my head, what I do have is the ability to see balance and imbalance. So do your setup. Right now, you're balanced, right? The club is touching the ground and you're not, like, you don't have a ton of weight tipped on your toes. No. It's still a little more than I would like. So waggle your toes. Right? So waggle the club in the air, waggle your toes in the air. And now from right there, just let the club fall on the ground right there, right? So the move that you should be doing is kind of like this, where you just kind of, you waggle, waggle, pick it up, drop it. Waggle, waggle, pick it up, drop it. And let your arms really just kind of drop and hang, right? From the hanging position, this to me is a fantastic setup, fantastic posture. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and hit one. Let's see what it does. Yep. Yep, so that's what we would expect because we immediately added an inch, maybe an inch and a half to your club. And what did you, have, what did you do? Because of based on muscle memory, yeah. you dipped into it. <laughs> yeah. Circle my head, yeah. Like I yeah. And that that's actually okay, but it's just like how much, like how much of that do we want? Yeah. So you just don't have to do it as much when you have this club in your hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you make the swing, and this is not necessarily the right shaft or whatever, it's just longer than what you've been mm -hmm. using. So swing back and stop. Okay, keep, right? So here's something that you don't have to do anymore with a longer club. You don't have to side bend into the backswing. Yeah. So stand up. Right? Like this is so much more powerful up here. Right? So think about anything else that you would have to do. If I was like, all right, Peter, I need you to take this axe, right? This is now an axe in mm -hmm. your hand. And this is a log, right? So put the club down, right? Pick it up in the air like an ax. You're gonna chop this log, right? Mm -hmm. Now, while you're raising the ax up, would you bend down? No. no. <clears throat> right? You would just raise it up, but then on the way down, you might like crunch your abs into it and just pop it. So as you go back in your backswing, yeah, it's fine to be up there. And then this, there should be some movement down. Yeah. But what there shouldn't be is on the way up, you shouldn't be moving down. That's like counter intuitive to hammering or smashing something. So as you go back in your backswing now, go ahead and raise the club way far back. There you go. Now that's, there's no pressure now on your back, right? No. Whereas before, you're like, oh no, you know, I'm gonna hold myself. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So try a couple and just see, just stand up taller and stay tall. Don't, don't feel like you have to contort yourself into these positions. Yep, just make it nice and smooth and easy. Yep, balance, tall, posture looks great. Love that posture. Yep, yep. So now what we're doing is based just because of the length of the club and understanding these two things about balance in your feet, height of backswing, now your swing's gonna replicate more like uh, Adam Scott rather than Joaquin Neiman or you know somebody who has to have so much bend in their in their side bend. Yeah, there you go. 
right? And you think about it, it's like, okay, well, why do I occasionally top the ball? Well, it's because my club wasn't long enough to reach the ground and my body actually came through where it was supposed to. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there you go. So now it's just way less effort, I guess. Yeah. So now instead of having to apply all the effort, you know, so here, come back here and film. Still rolling. So we've got this club that's two inches over. And then this one here. Alright. Oh, that's an old one. I think this is standard. Right? So you see the difference in yeah. two inches, right? So if I set up to this one and see my posture straight up in the air like that. There's no pressure on my back. You may make a nice big turn and I come back to here. I take this one here and I'm like in the same thing. And I'm like, it was you. Yeah. <laughs> you came in, you went like this, and you, everything was great. And I was like, wow, that's really good. And then you went, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then you were proportionately, you're down here. So then you're like, okay, I can't talk it, I can't talk it, your weight's on your toes. You drop your shoulder down here. Then you're like, okay, now how do I stay down here, stay down here, stay down here? Yeah, pretty much. Right? So now that you're up here, and this is too long for me, but if I stand up this way, and I pull my arms up here, and now I get this. Yeah. Right? Now that I'm up here, I don't have to do anything to come back down. I just can go come. And yeah. then I can finish here instead of you know, what you felt like before. Yeah, definitely, because I noticed that even when I set up, my setup was very crunched out compared to all the other uh, good players. Right? Yeah, yeah. I was a lot more tilted towards because of the <coughs> Yeah. And there's, there's plenty of players in history that have figured out ways to do this. Um, Ernie Els, for example, tall player. I think, I think his clubs might only be in a half inch or something over length. Um, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Right? But what he would do, and you see it every time, you still see him on the Champions Tour. He does this when he sets up. He, like, pulls his pants up on his knees. Why does he have to do that? Well, he's getting ready to bend this angle so much that it's, it's, his pants are caught. So he has to release his pants so that his knees have somewhere to go. So that's how he got away with it. You know, he would squat way, way, way down on it. Ah, that was a good one, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so we got to get out on the grass and see what this feels like because off the mat, it kind of you kind of cheat where you can like drop kick it and it still turns out okay. So let's try some off the grass. All right, so you're standing tall. Good. Mm -hmm. That's all right. You're gonna get some of those because you're used to having to change your timing and drop into it. So here's another crazy thing. That whole forward shaft lane, you can't do it with short clubs yeah. because you have to bend so much. With long clubs, it's way easy, right? So do your grip. Right? Just give me a forward shaft lane. Keep going all the way. There you go. Like, that's easy. You can do that. You didn't even have to bend to do that, yeah. right? So don't, don't worry about it. Just swing. Enjoy trying to just stand up tall and swing. Yeah, there you go. That was great. That was tour quality right there. Yeah. Yeah, you're an athlete. You don't need to be overthinking this game at all, right? Which is kind of where you've been. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pure. That was a good strike. So ball first, nice little divot. Yeah. Yeah.
And the good news is, is you really, you really have done a really good job. The information you've gotten, all the work that you've put in, you have a lot of really good fundamentals. This, this will just tie it all together. This will just make it that much easier. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> a little thin, but still a good result. Yeah, yeah. And so what happens not only with the thin one before, so if we like reverse like Sherlock Holmes this, I love Sherlock Holmes movies because, you know, he's like, do, 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 boom, 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 boom. And this is how it all connects together. So now what we're doing is we're Sherlock Holmesing like, since 2018 all your problems <laughs> right mm -hmm. so what happens is not only do you get the thin one you get the thin hook yeah. so what happens is when you before with your short clubs you would settle your weight would come backwards yeah. well then not only were you thin but you were falling this way so then the club was routing and pulling yeah, that's a big problem. yeah. Still, yeah. I mean, these yeah. Not, yeah 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 so what will happen now is so as as there's a gap between your shoulder and that ball. So grip down two inches, right? That's where you used to be. Mm -hmm. So then to fill that gap, what would happen is as your body was falling backwards because it didn't want to be here, your arms would have to extend and then the face would come in and shut and then you would hit, you'd be falling backwards and you'd like hit a thin pull. Yeah. <clears throat> well now with the length, you'll be able to stand tall and you'll be able to get your hands kind of exactly what you've been, all the things that you've been learning are correct. The problem is you couldn't do them as easily as with, easily. yeah. That's yeah. Because I had those like, what I used to try is like let the water drop out of my right hand. Yeah, yeah. And when I had that much side bend, usually the, the strikes were good. Yeah. But I don't know, for some reason it was hard to keep that a consistent thing. Co correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Good strike there. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like, it'd be like, all right, Craig, you know, you've played in tour events. I'm going to give you a set of kids clubs and we're going to go mano and mano 18 holes. Guess what? I'm going to figure it out. Like, I'm going to shoot a good score with kids clubs, but I'll probably be in the hospital by the end of the day, right? Like, I don't want, like, we don't want that. Okay, a little thin. Right? So the tools that you have to solve a little thin, you already know them. They're all, they're all, they're all in there. The water out of the air, this little bit of side bend. That's good. Like you want to do that. Hands forward. You want to do that. Yeah. Right. You just overdid it a little. Right. Yep. But now what's going to happen is before when you hit a really, really good one, that's when you essentially had to overdo everything. Yeah. Now, if you actually do overdo everything, it's you're going to hit it a little fat. So that's good news because just don't overdo it. A, a, right? The body's going to crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should be able to stand a little taller through the ball now. Yeah, there you go. That was pure. Yeah. And then you finish on balance. And you know, and you're up on that left leg. Definitely, like one big thing that was for me, like when I did these, I couldn't finish in balance ever. Right. I was always too much here, and then I would fall on this side. But like with this club, with this length, yes, it makes more sense because I'm more up. Yes. Yeah. So here's how this works. So do your stand up real tall. Don't put the club on the ground. Okay, you're balanced. Yeah. Right. The adult male arms weigh about ten pounds a piece. So take your grip and put the club in front of you. Okay, and you just imbalanced yourself because you took 20 pounds and pushed them over here. Yeah. So what you have to do is you have to take your 20 pounds of, of booty back here, right? And you have to settle it on the other side, right? So you got your, your butt's 20 pounds, your arms are 20 pounds, now you're back in balance, right? Now swing back and stop, right? Now, your arms actually moved to this side of you. Stand up taller. Don't bend your knees as much. Stand up, yeah, turn. Right now, your 20 pounds of arms went to this side. And very, very quickly, they're going to end up on front of you again. So go back down to impact. Right now, the 20 pounds is back in front of you, and your head's leaning a little bit, so we added a little bit more weight this way. And then what's going to happen is your arms are going to whip around to the other side. Okay, now the 20 pounds is back on that side. 
So it's always this, this balancing act of like, where's the weight? What, where is your body? So if you've got 20 pounds of arms flinging around in a circle, the other 180 pounds or whatever, 200 pounds of human that you are has to balance the 20 that's flinging around, right? Yeah. So when you stand there and you get yourself set, if you balance yourself kind of through the ankle, so if you look at kind of where the ankle goes straight down to your heel, mm -hmm. it's right at the underside of the heel. So it's right there is where you want to feel the balance right underneath your ankle. It should stay there pretty much the whole time through the swing. Right, so nice big, big turn and find that balance in the heel there and stop. Okay, where is it? So pretty good. Yep, now slowly come back down through. All right, there you go. Boom, same kind of spot all the way through and up to the other side. All right, so when you're swinging these 20 pounds of arms and club and everything, and you're flying around there at you know seven irons over 100 miles an hour and it's whipping around because you're a strong guy. You can't afford to have like, oops, oops, I'm off balance. Because that's like all of a sudden you're driving your Ferrari and the wheels are like flying all over the place. You're going to like crash. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to have a high speed swing with imbalance. Yep. Your swing has to be on balance the whole time. So enjoy. Keep hitting. Unless you're Scottish Shelton. <laughs> yeah, right? He's yeah. He's contemplating his golf career. I saw a video of him talking to a Tiger. Yeah. Oh, oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was very perplexed by that. <laughs> yeah. There it is. That was pure. I mean, look how straight that went, too. Right? So, like I said, the Sherlock Holmesing stuff is explaining a lot of this. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. That's even better. Taller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little thin. So what happened on that one was actually you tried to um, side bend, but you actually like bumped your hips forward and you slid your hips forward. So you don't have to do that anymore. You can just, here's a good exercise. Take your club, put it across your shoulders. Yep, do it from a tall position. Yep, now turn and point the club, but you don't have to point it straight down. It's not going to point straight down. So turn, it's going to point kind of over there. Okay. Because your arms are going to go up and down. It's two planes. It's not exactly one plane. That's where you're going to go to. That's enough side bend. Now come back through. Plenty side bend. Stay right there. That's enough. That's Adam Scott side bend. That's not Joaquin Neiman side bend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And you, you had to do Joaquin Neiman side bend because your clubs were too short. And you, that was the only way to get back down there. Yeah. So as you make your swing now, keep your shoulder, your thoracic spine, your upper back, feel like it retains some height as you turn. Okay, fine, just a tiny bit thin. But these are thin shots that are like normal golf or thin shots. These are tour golf or thin shots. These are not like the top shots and the hooks that you were getting before. No. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. So here's how this works through the bag. Now, when you eventually get do get your longer clubs, your wedges, you'll be able to stand taller. That's going to improve your little short chip shots and wedges because you're going to be able to retain a manageable posture. The other thing that happens is when you have, for example, irons that are too short and it requires you to side bend crunch a lot, then you grab your driver and you've just hit a bucket of ball side bending the crap out of it. And now your driver doesn't need to be any longer. It can stay 45 inches or whatever it is, but you side bend and you over side bend that. And then you get these massive block flare out to the right because you side bended like an iron and you don't have to side bend like an iron. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> you've created a swing pattern through hard work to get some decent strikes on an iron and then eventually you drew to that same thing with a hybrid fairway wood or a driver. You're going to hit it fat or you're going to block it or something bad's yeah. going to happen. So now when you have the irons at the right length, your posture can operate at the right height. Then you, re, you then you build that pattern. Then you throw a driver in there, which we'll do here uh, as soon as that person leaves the back of the range. 
um, you'll be able to retain the height and it will be consistent from every club, mm -hmm. right? So, but stand as tall as you want to. Yep, and then just work on getting that good compression on the back of the ball. There you go. <clears throat> yep, good swing. Yeah. So if you only had to do two things, stand tall and compress it, that's a lot less thinking than some of the other stuff. That is definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. right so that's a reversion where you like side bend it extra and you like slid your hips extra right so just stay tall what comes down to the ball is your arms you don't have to take your whole torso down to the ball just your arms come down to the ball there you go that should have been a light bulb moment right there yep. right your arms go up and down not your whole torso so do your backswing, we'll, we'll work on that. So turn about halfway back, that's it on the turn. Now, your arms go up, your arms come down, your torso doesn't have to change height. Your arms can now just kind of go up and down from that spot, right? And that's a, that's a very, very powerful thing to actually be able to take your arms up and then throw your arms back down on the ball. When your arms are allowed to go up and down, that's a ton of speed. So just try that. Stand tall. Make your arms go up and down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Good one. All right, so that's a little different feeling because now your arms are going to be allowed to kind of separate from your torso a little bit. They're allowed to go up and down independently before because you were bent over so much, you had to keep your arms kind of like stuck on your body the whole time. Yeah, so now you can swing your arms more independently, a little bit more up and down the body. Uh-huh, that's okay. You slid a little on that on the downswing, which that's gonna be the cause of that little thin shot. Because what'll happen is you go to the top of your swing and your hips will bump out ahead of you and then you won't, you won't quite be able to reach because you've slid them. So leave your feet a little bit more quiet and independently just use your arms. Feel like it's more of an up and down with the arm swing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all right. Try another one. So what this lesson about is about is kind of understanding how you got to where you got with shorter clubs, right? And then effectively just unlearning a few things. Like you don't have to do some of the things that you were doing. Start to... Yeah. Yeah, it's a little tricky because you, you've built a pattern around those things. Um, if you can kind of just take the place of like a kid learning something new, like, oh, this is fun. This is new. I'm not going to overthink this thing. I'm just going to like be a kid and like learn how to just move the club, swing it up and down. Yeah, there you go. Great setup. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. So let's have some fun with it. Let's hit like um all the rest of these balls mm -hmm. but i don't want them to be the same shot one time okay so <clears throat> i want a new target a new distance and a new shot so i want like this one for example i want it to be like a punch shot from under the trees okay you're like just pick a target i'm gonna like hit a little chip shot little punch shot i'm gonna go with the yellow flag yellow flag and yeah just kind of punch it down there There you go. Good. Okay. So now this one, I want this one to be a high draw. All right. So here, let's tee it up. You're on a par three. You're like, I need to launch this thing up in the air. <clears throat> You're going to start it out over these trees on the right. Right. And then you're going to like sweep it up over the trees and bring it back down on that checkered yet black and yellow flag at the end there. Right. 
Yeah, don't overthink mechanics. Just think about what you got to do with the ball flight. Yep, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Nice high draw. I might actually hit the pin. Nice. All right. So now I'll put one right on the ground, and I want to see um, a little, like, punchy cut shot. So go over here at these red flags on the left. So you're in the trees on the right side of the fairway. You've got to hit, like, a punch shot, and it's got to, like, have just, like, a little fade to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So that, that was because you're trying to do it too mechanically with your upper body. Get your hands involved. Like, figure out how to go like this. Here, you film. Mm -hmm. Right. And each time when you get in here, you kind of, like, set your body up. And you kind of, like, do this kind of thing. Just, just go like that. Okay. So you're going to play it back to your stance. You waggle your hand and you're going to go. Alright, so pick your hands up and just... Okay. Do that. Like, like get your hands actually involved in the swing. I think you've been taking your hands out of the swing. I was. Yeah, so let's put them back in and see. Because you maybe never really experienced this before, so we got to know if you got good hands or not. Yeah, there you go. Kind of pop it with your hands. All right? So now we'll just do a standard one. We'll go straight down the range there. Normal swing, like warming up on the range swing. You're not overthinking your mechanics. You're just gonna take a nice loose swing. Yeah, there you go, good one. All right, let's try another one and then make this one fade. So that one overdrew, let's make this one fade. Okay, so the way you're going to do that is you're going to, yeah, you know how to hit a flop shot? Yeah. Show me how to hit a flop shot. So I would open it. Yeah. And try to do it. Yeah, so see how you're doing it all with your big muscles? Yeah. You're not using your hands. Yeah. Right, so I'll show you the flop shot. Right, so instead of doing it, opening it and doing this, mm -hmm. this is a flop shot. Okay. Right, if you see someone around the edge of the green, they know how to get a really good flop shot. You watch Tiger, he's gonna pick it up with his hands, flop it underneath. There's not gonna to be too many that are gonna go like big body. That's probably just um, leftover mechanics from like golf tech. They do a lot of yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but we want the hands in the game because the hands are attached to the club. So get do show me a little wristy flop shot. Wristy, like hinge your wrist, kind of pick it up, and pop it down. Boom, yeah, do that. Hit this ball just like that. We don't care where it goes. Just kind of hinge it up and then, hey, there you go. You actually used your hands, right? <laughs> Might be the first time ever, I don't know. I've been trying to get him out of the swing. Yeah, yeah. All right, so nice big turn, just normal swing, but let's get your hands, let's use your hands. Yeah, I mean, how pure did that feel? Very pure. Right? So. Didn't say much. Right? <laughs> That's okay. But if we Sherlock Holmes this thing, you started. You unfortunately probably had these clubs um, were, were probably not the first clubs you had, right? No, no. Yeah, like, so. The first clubs I had when I started in 2018 were like a senior flex. <laughs> stuff like that. Somebody was a bag of Yeah. He didn't need it anymore. Yeah. And then. I played with my brother-in-laws. He had regular shaft. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I got fitted for these. Yeah. So then by the time you actually got fitted, you ended up at like plus a half an inch, right? But with your build, you should have probably been closer to like, this is plus two inches. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know that we necessarily need to get you to plus two inches, but we just need to get you longer to yeah. feel like where's the balance at. Yeah. So now if we look at, look at what happened, because you had short clubs, you had to bend. So you started researching and watching and learning, how do I get side bend? And then you're like, well, I have the scooping thing. 
right? That was the first thing. How do I, I got this early release scooping thing. Well, now it makes sense. You can reach the ball, yeah. right? So here, so we'll video this part. So this is the evolution of Peter's game, right? <laughs> so you had short clubs, whippy shafts. You were probably like flinging the yep. club like this. And you were coming over the top. I can show you a video of exactly <laughs> that, by the way. Because <laughs> what happens is when someone's really, really tall and they have short clubs, they, they go over the top because our back feels better when they do over the top. It doesn't hurt. Yep. It hurts when you do that. Yep. But that's effectively what you learn to do. So you yep. were like, okay, well, over the top swing sucks. I need to figure out how to get this thing on plane. So then you started side bending and working on your swing. Well, then you got better because you were moving in the right direction, but you were again trying to do it all here. If somebody five years ago or six years ago, however long it was, just had us hand to do this, probably would have been a little different story. Yeah. Right? The good and the bad is the bad is that you, you were in toil you're toiling and struggling and dealing with it it could have been a lot easier yeah the good news is is you have a lot of um, historical data now in your brain about how to do problem solving but with me you're going to see the problem solving isn't quite the same like i don't want you to problem solve doing that i would rather you problem solve like figuring out how to move your move your arms past your body Mm -hmm. There can always be a blend. There's plenty of golfers that use a lot of body, and there's plenty of golfers that use a lot of arms that are on the tour. There's not very many that are like dealing with like the stuff that you're dealing with that eventually get there because, like you said, you you could shoot you know in the low 80s, but then you get in this topping thing, and then you can't get the ball in the hole, and now you're shooting yeah. closer to 100, right? So now that you're experiencing this for the first time, you're going to be up here, you're going to relax your back, and then I want you to be able to actually release the hands and the club past your body. And then we can blend back a little bit, right? So I don't want you fully armsy, but I don't want you fully body, <laughs> right? Because we don't want to take them out. It's better to have a blend of both. Yeah. So then eventually what it might look like is you have a little bit of this, you have a good structure, you know, you come in here, but then you actually like ha have the ability to like mm -hmm. accelerate the club at the right time. Yeah. So let's um, hit a few more inside here. <clears throat> Do you have questions? Um, no, uh, it's, just, it's very different from what I've been doing so far. So. Yeah. How... It's like learning a new thing. Right, right. How does the Sherlock Holmes story sound? It sounds good because the biggest thing was that when you told me, like, go slow mo, I would always finish up here instead of on the ball. I never understood why. <laughs> because, yeah. like, okay, I need more side, more, more. Yeah, yeah, more and more. It's here, and then I was thinking maybe pushing the hands out. Yeah. It yeah. just never made sense. And then the other thing was the, um, the other thing was the balance have so much more balance mm -hmm. with this club. Yeah. Yeah. Than I have with mine clubs. Yeah. It's yeah. a bunch of faith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as you're talking about that balance and everything, look back here on the wall there. All right, at the very top we got Sam Snead. Look at that posture through the ball. Yeah. Right. Now he gets the side bend, he gets that acceleration. He's got, you know, from right here, he's got like the club coming in a powerful position right here. Right? And then it does that, but then look at his spine. Now he's a guy that still holds the or he's tied with Tiger for the most wins. But they don't give Sam Sneed credit for a lot of the wins that he had because it was during like war times and mm -hmm. whatever. But <clears throat> When you look at the movements and you see John Rom, right? Strong guy, look at his spine right here. His foot's on the ground. He's got some good structure to what's going on, but he's not super bent. Cameron Champ. Cameron Champ was probably a little more bent. That's probably, you know, 
He's more bendy, but he's taller than those guys. I think he's the tallest of any of them on that wall, right? Brooks is in the middle. I mean, yeah, right. Brooks right there, yeah, yeah. But it's more about what's manageable. So the human spine has like uh, a range of motion of each vertebrae, yeah. right? So as the vertebrae tilts and moves, it, there's a maximum because then otherwise you start compressing the discs in the middle when you start bending too much. It's just like working out in the gym. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, if I put weight on and I bend too far, well, I'm going to compress those discs and cause problems. Yeah. So in your golf swing, under all the speed that you're putting in, it's the same thing. So we just want to alleviate some of that. You're always going to have some bend, right? But we just don't need to overdo it. Yeah, that was pure. Nice. I try to fade, but how much fade? Yeah. Well, it's a different it's a different fade too. It's a release fade. Mm -hmm. Instead of holding it off, just like swing your arms, like feel like you're having some you know, arm swing back and forth. Don't um don't get too rigid with your hands and arms. Yeah, there you go. That's a lot more arm swing than you're used to. Right and there. Yeah, yeah, a little fade there, yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the way this was going to work is you're going to figure out how to actually stand up and swing. So, we got to figure out how to get your clubs to that point as soon as possible so that you're not having to work so hard. And then, let your the mental gymnastics that you're having to do, take a little break. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my brother-in-law being like, you were think that one. Like, I stand in front of a five-iron shot and I'm thinking about it like, for a minute. Yeah, yeah. And then I end up, I know what Right, then you're like, oh, then I just topped it in the water. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's good. Cool. Yeah. So I've captured all of this. It's going to be, you know, a good... 45 minute video probably are you okay if i put this on my youtube yeah that's okay yeah um, okay I'm gonna be a star yeah yeah you're gonna be like uh insta famous <laughs> yeah there you go but there isn't any reason with your athletic ability i mean all the stuff that you've done with the martial arts you have a very good mind body awareness mm -hmm. so learning new movements is not hard for you the problem was you chose to do all of your movements around some clubs that really just didn't match, yeah. you know? And that's how you got to be pretty good with short clubs. You just, you know, you figured out how to move to make up for it. Yeah. But my concern is, you know, in the next 10 years, you're going to be the guy that you'll be telling stories about when you were young and strong and now your back is a mess and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like we don't want that. We don't want that. I pulled it back a couple of times. I mean, I pulled, but like I've had a pinch nerve. Yeah. When I was swinging. Yeah. But. Yeah, we have just too much compression on those angles is what, what happens there. Yeah. So you'll just be able to stand up and swing. And, and I, I would say this lesson is just more eye-opening to the fact that it's not that hard. Yeah. Right? You've been making it a little too hard. Definitely. Right. So if you can just kind of huh, like take a deep breath, relax and just swing the club, don't overthink it, that would be a good place to be. Good. All right. Sometimes that happens too. Yeah, the face is a little shut, right? But it's just because of the other stuff too that you were working on. Mm -hmm. And you and we'll work through some of that. The phase 1 is like just be able to stand up, relax, and swing. Don't don't overthink it. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Anything uh, you want to add to the video before I wrap it up? Um, no. No. Yeah, All right. Yeah, you did great. It was a beautiful learning time. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, isn't it?